Hello and welcome to my April Q&A video. I think I skipped out on March, uh, unfortunately. Um, lots of things going on, lots of models to build and paint, uh, new releases, very, very busy. So I do apologize, first, first of all, um, for not getting a March one out. Uh, March sort of came and went very quickly, uh, but back with the Q&As, ready for April. Um, and May and all the rest of it. So there's a few topics for this video. I'll talk about releases, news, things like that, uh, upcoming things, and then I'll go straight into the questions and answers. So we had quite a few releases in March. We had the, the third triumvirate of the Primark, um, so Gathering Storm Part 3. We had uh, that with the uh, plastic Primark, um, Rebute Gilliman. Incredible model. Um, I will get around to painting him at some point. <laughs> uh, uh, nice box set too, uh, along with the book and all the rest of it. Um, I think February we had um, Prospero Burns, uh, along with the Sagittarium Guard and the uh, couple of um, Dreadnoughts, or at least that, that Dreadnought, the Achilles. And very recently, only in the past week, we've had the um, Shadow War Armageddon uh, box set. And I think we've got a few weeks of the uh, Karcharodons, um, you know, the, the steampunk sort of dwarfs for Age of Sigma. Um, and we'll definitely have uh, Nurgle releases and things coming, coming up. Not long after that, my guess is. So another bit of news is the Thunderhawk. I think I said in one of my other videos that uh, it's uh, plastic. And if you go on the Warhammer community, uh, you can have a look right there that it's not going to be plastic now. It's actually going to be resin. Which I am disappointed. Uh, it would have been a gamble for them to do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure they can afford to do it, and I'm, I'm sure that they uh, would get their money back, even if they gave it a conservative sort of price point. Uh, however, they've chosen to do it in resin um, with Forge World. I said when I unboxed and reviewed the Stormbird that um, if they could update the Thunderhawk um, and use the same sort of techniques, upgrade all the parts and make it um, more modern, and, and they sort of have. Yeah, you've got everything there from air brakes, which the other one didn't have. Uh, the turret looks a little bit smaller. Um, instead of it being more boxy shape, I mean, it's quite a, quite a boxy shape anyway. They, they've made it, they've shaved off some of the edges on it. But the front wings now look wider or longer because they've moved the heavy bolters to the sides, uh, like side sponsons, which again, I'm not really a big fan of. I sort of understand that the heavy bolters are on the, you know, the, the, the main wings, and um, they've got 360 degree firing arc, but for these just to have sort of like a 180 degree, um, I much preferred them to be on the wings because then it can completely cover uh, the assault ramp um, if anything's trying to get in or I don't know maybe they just maybe they just landed in a very hostile place and there's a lot of enemy um, outside the doors those guns don't really support that um, unless you're a fair distance away um, and spread out but oh well there's this there are many reasons why they've changed the design and things um, but the interesting thing another interesting direction that they've gone in is not only have they made it resin um, which I think the other model was about 14 years old or so I think it came out in 2003 2004 um, so it's a very old model is that they're also going to be giving you the chance of well it's going to be available at the Warhammer f uh, Fest now they put in fact but then they put hoping which is sort of like a double entendre in, in my books um, they've said it's a fact but actually they're hoping to have it available. It's either a fact that it is going to be available or you're hoping to have it available. You can't be both things. It's, uh, <laughs> I would have rather have them been clear that yes, we're going to have it or we're hoping to have it. Don't make it a fact and, and not, and, and then hope to have it because if you say it's a fact and then people arrive and then it's not available, either because um, so many people have got there and, and they've bought them all up or um, you haven't made enough of them, which I'm, ho which I'm hoping uh, won't be the case. 
But um, yeah, so they're, they're hoping to have it available at the, at the Warhammer Fest, um, which is the main reason, if not one of the, the reasons, why I've, I've bought myself a ticket. I'll be going on the Saturday. So Warhammer Fest 2017, I thought I'd just uh, get this out there um, in this part of the video. Um, apparently it is the ultimate Warhammer experience and it's, it's at the Rico Arena or Rico Arena. So Rico, you know, off uh, Starship Troopers, obviously, um, <laughs> over the 27th and 28th of May. Um, you'll find everything any Warhammer fan could possibly want. I'm going to look for uh, plastic sisters because you know there's no there's no plastic thunderhawk and if I can't find it because I'm a Warhammer fan then unfortunately their tagline has failed. Um you get to shop from the largest collection of products at any Warhammer world in the world uh, at any show. Well, you can do that with just a couple of clicks <laughs> at the moment. Um but what is cool is that you can actually meet members of Forge World, Citadel, White Dwarf, Army Painter, and Heavy Metal, um, and, and the other creative folks. And that's really cool. It's nice to see the, the people behind these models and the books and the lore and all the rest of it, because um, they, are, are, they are the creative geniuses behind Games Workshop and Forge World. And regardless of how much things cost or how much they're paid or anything like that, you know, the decisions that, that the board have made um, they are real people and um, passionate about what they love um, and for them to get paid for it is I think they are living the dream and um, personally you can also admire hundreds of beautifully painted miniatures um, you can learn more at the in-depth seminars and hobby, hobby demo pods they've missed something out there if they called it hobby demo drop pods that hobby drop pods oh, well um, and you can take take part in the first ever Warhammer Fest tournaments. I mean, there have been tournaments before, but just not Warhammer Fest. And I think there'll be, um, you know, some specialist sort of models there as well um, that you can only get from from that event. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to it uh, next month, uh, end of next month, um, something to look forward to. And uh, I'll really try and pick up a, a Thunderhawk and I'll really try and do an unboxing uh, from the boot of my car. No, I won't. I'll, uh, I'll come back and do that, obviously. If you want to stop me and say hi, excellent. I'll be wearing a Space Marine t-shirt, so I'll be quite easy to sort of spot. But then again, there's probably going to be a lot of people wearing Space Marine t-shirts. Uh, maybe I should just sort of dress up as a Space Marine then instead. Never mind. Don't think I've been to an event since 2003. Uh, so again, for me, this is 14 years. Um, so yeah, there you go. So I'm going and, and that's it. And, uh, hopefully it'll be a great day out. Prices for the Thunderhawk. What do you guys think it'll be? Stormbird is 750. Um, if this is out for, if they try and sell this for 500, I'll be extremely annoyed. Um, I'll be quite annoyed if they try and sell it for, uh, 450. If they sell it for the same price as the previous Thunderhawk, I'll, I'll be chuffed. Um, and I think that that's what they should do, regardless of any extra costs they've incurred or anything like that. But if they try and push it for 500, I think that will really push people people away. And, th and then they've done, in, and then in my books, they've really um, messed up. One, they haven't um, taken the leap to make it plastic um, and have it at a much cheaper price available to everyone that's easier to make, build and, you know, game with. And second, they're messed up by increasing the price from the original model. Uh, so I really hope that isn't the case. They can turn this around by um, releasing it at a, at a very similar price to the, the previous model. If they don't, then pff, even if they sell 20 or 30 of them, they're pretty much made up there, the, the cost, cost of them. So now in this part of the video, I'll go through the, uh, the Q and A. Um, as always, if you've got any questions for me, 40K related, motorcycle related, anything related, uh, video game, film, whatever, um, please do put it in the comments below. And I always need to remember not to uh, answer your questions in the comments below, but 
you know gather them up and, and answer them in uh, the next video so um, the first question comes from uh, Dwibblecat so Dwibblecat asks uh, do you play Dawn of War 1 or 2 and if so are you excited for Dawn of War 3? Back in 2004 and uh, I actually purchased the laptop um, a, a most powerful sort of laptop that I could afford at the time primarily so that I could play um, Dawn of War, uh, Dawn of War 1 and, um, and Half-Life uh, 2 as well and it ran them both um, fine maybe not on ultra settings but it, it ran them both and uh, that was the main reason so you could say Dawn of War um, was the catalyst of me um, getting a, a sort of semi-decent computer or platform to, to play the game on. Um, so yeah, I have played Dawn of War 1 and 2. Dawn of War 1 and 2, um, I played them heavily. I was excited about Dawn of War 3, mainly because of the cinematic. <laughs> the thing is, the more and more I see of it, the less I like the look of it. Everything from, you know, the, the fiasco of uh, Angelus jumping really high in, in Terminator armor. It's tactical dreadnought armor. Jump pack troops, yeah, I can completely understand, but nowhere in any of the Horus Heresy. And now, now we're talking about when um, technology was was m much more advanced than what it is in the 41st millennium. Nowhere in all of the Horus Heresy books I've read has has any of the authors, Dan Abnett, um, Gray McNeil, none of them have detailed Terminator equipped uh, space marines leaping such, such di distances and all the rest of it. And I think to get the source material right is is imperative when you're dealing with with um, 40k. Uh, everything from the sound of the weapons to the way the characters move to the way they sound, uh, their voices, things like that. So yeah, I was excited about it, but my <laughs> excitement has just uh, fizzled away, um, and now I I'm not really that bothered. Then I saw that they were. Um, uh, promoting you know if you pre-order it I, I'm really not a big fan of these pre-order bonuses things you should, no one should ever have to pre-order a game because um, it's not tested you just don't know how well it's going to be whether there's going to be many bugs um, and I'm also not a big fan of the season passes and things like that so talking about that will just get me on a, a bit of a rant so we'll just end it there I'm, I'm not excited about Dawn of War 3 um, anymore. Uh, Michael Gatford asks are you planning to do any updated EDC videos in the future? Yeah, definitely. That's on the cards. I'm quite happy with my current EDC at the moment, uh, but I am willing to, to make a new video on that um, in the next few weeks, uh, ready, ready for the summer. And also he asks, uh, uh, do I play any other tabletop games? Tabletop games, <laughs> there's so many that uh, incorporate that description. Everything from, I'd say chess is a tabletop game. I do like my chess. Even sort of the game that never ends, Monopoly, that is that is a tabletop game. But if you're talking about sort of um, games which have, you know, you roll a dice and you play with miniatures and things, um, it is mainly 40K, but in 40K and, and Horus Heresy, in those two game systems, you've got, you know, now you've got Shadow War, you've, you've got Death in the Skies, You've got the uh, the Burning of Prospero games. You know, I'd like to get into sort of X-Wing. I'd like to get into, you know, all those other little um, sort of tabletop games. But really, I've got enough on my plate with, um, you know, with Warhammer and Forge World stuff. Uh, Age of Sigmar, I'd love to get into that. I think there's some beautiful miniatures that GW um, make. Um, but I just, I've got so much on my plate with, with this one. Average Mig asks, uh, can you do a knife uh, review or update video? Um, yeah, uh, I'm still on my way to refresh all of my, my knife reviews. Um, I can do them in 4K now and I think I will keep them at 4K. Uh, the 40K videos and things, I'll, I'll just do them in um, you know 1080p. It'll be a nicer looking 1080p. but. Uh, but yeah, uh, their knife update video is long overdue. Um, I'm gonna have it all on the table again, um, as before. So thank you for that question. Are you still into knives? Uh, so quite a few knife questions. Uh, if so, have you got anything new or has the collection changed enough for a collection update? Well, I think I've just sort of answered that. Um, I've had a couple of new knives um, and yeah, there'll be a collection update video at some point. Oh, and that question was from uh, Tom, Tom Folks. 
um, or forks. Roll Zon asks, should we support our local Games Workshop store? Support your local Games Workshop. As in, if we're talking about, you know, the, the Warhammer, you know, the Games Workshop, Games Workshop's official store. I mean, I live over an hour away from, from my one, but uh, if you live in the same city or 20 minutes, half an hour away from your local one, uh, yeah, I, I think you should support it. Um, but at the same time, uh, it depends on what you get out of it. Um, if you go in, have a chat, they give you um, some useful advice or some previews. I know they have to keep quite tight-lipped because of social media and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, if, if you have a good rapport with them, uh, then yeah, I suppose you can support them. Uh, you know, ev go in every every month or two and, you know, uh, buy a couple of things. Um, but Games Workshop is, you know, the biggest, you know, miniature company in the in the world. You know, they're worldwide. They release everything on the same day everywhere around the world. They've got hundreds and hundreds of stores. It doesn't really matter too much whether you order online or whether you go into the store. I mean, they record absolutely everything. They record everything that you buy in the store, um, the amounts, uh, the quantities, all the rest of it. They see what's popular. However, that being said, you you know you buy enough the internet and things, the money goes into the same pot, and it's still distributed around the whole company for wages and, and things like that. What I don't like to see is obviously when there's one store manager and he is the only person in the shop. I think that's too much pressure. Um, no matter how big, big or small the shop is, I think there should always be at least two staff. Um, it's just too much pressure for one manager for for one store. Yeah, so that that's my take on it. You should support it if you live close, but if you don't, well then unfortunately Games Workshop haven't uh, created any stores or don't want to make any third party stores um, near nearby. So no, you should you shouldn't feel like you have to travel a great distance just to support a store that's uh, a long way away from you. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Isle E asks, what's your opinion on the Space Wolves? Cough, Corgis, cough. For oh, my opinion on the Space Wolves. Um, I think they're fiercely loyal. I do like um, Lehman Ross's two, two uh, Space Wolves. Um, Freaky and whatever her name, whatever the other one's name is, I always forget. I think they're great models and I, th I think they work well with um, Lehman Russ. Uh, it's just a shame they're sort of like separate and you have to, you know, they're quite expensive, but you know, they're well detailed and things. But Space Wolves in general, I do like Space Wolves. Um, I do like the Viking, you know, Vikings in space. I do like that whole sort of theme and that's quite popular um, in culture today. Everything from people's haircuts to beards to, you know, um, there's a lot of inspiration and um, mirroring of that going going on at the moment. But I like the contrast between them and the and the sort of the Vikings and also the Thousand Suns and the you know the Egyptian um, sort of vibe. But yeah, I think Space Wolves are, are fine. Uh, I don't like what they did to um, Thousand Suns because I think Thousand Suns were great. Yeah, that's a story for another time. A O K J. Uh, says um great video just wondering as both a gamer and a fan of 40k have you played eternal crusade for pc um eternal crusade so eternal crusade is a persistent world where players must choose from one of four factions and work together to take down opposing forces on metacritic it's got a meta score of 52 and a user score of five um so not the best came out sort of september last year and it's also uh, on PlayStation 4. I don't know whether it is out on the PlayStation 4 um, or it is coming out, but uh, it looks all right. Um, I mean, I think the best sort of games that pay homage um, to, to 40K really, I, I first, my first ever 40K game was, um, and uh, I got it on PC and I had a few difficulties and things. Um, and eventually it came out on PlayStation 2, I think. I really enjoyed it on that. I wasn't into town. I don't have a single town model. Um, but I just like that you could be, uh, that, you, that you could use the uh, the Imperial weapons. I know, heresy, right? Um, yeah, you, you could uh, pick up bolters and use them and you could be a space marine in multiplayer, things like that. 
Um, but then the best sort of games, I, I really like Space Marine um, that came out a few years ago now. Uh, I think that was great. And also Dawn of War, both of those two games. But Eternal Crusade, no, there was mention of like a, a huge online multiplayer game um, and it had Warhound Titans in and things like that. And that looked amazing. Um, but unfortunately, I think it was Dark Crusade or something, I can't remember. But either way, that sort of fell through and um, that no longer is around. But to pick a character and be part of an online community and conquer different areas with your mates, uh, you know, like one of your mates could have been uh, Skitari or, uh, you know, Mechanicum and one of them could have been Imperial Guard or something like that and then you could have been Space Marine. I mean, that, that would have been cool. And then you could have the, the Agents of Xenos as well where you could have, um, you know, Chaos and then Demon and, and so on. Uh, or orcs or different variants of orcs that sort of game would would be excellent too um, but uh, we can sort of only only dream okay so carrying on with the uh, the questions oh uh, what are your wargaming hobby goals wargaming hobby goals and what's your favorite cheese uh, well a little while ago <laughs> one of my wargaming hobby goal was to uh, finish the warlord titan he's here in spirit that was my biggest goal and that took ages months and months and months and months um but i got that model october 2015 and it took a long long time would i do another one yes if forge world gave me another one for free i think everyone would um you know a big free model like that uh but would i would i buy another one I don't think so. Not and, and the reason being is is it is a beautiful model. Um, it takes a lot of time, and it took me a lot of time because unlike <laughs> it seems ninety percent of everybody that's built for, uh, Warlord Titans, they have built them and then sprayed them and then sprayed them here and there, uh, added a bit of details and weathering and you know transfers done. With me, I've gone and hand painted every single. Uh, component nuts bolts you name it everything's hand painted and then all put together magnetized and all the rest of it so that was one of my big hobby wargaming hobby goals so thank you my friend uh crew or angel usilisis thank you for that the main goal is to finish the chapter uh I've been building a chapter and whenever I mention the word chapter, you know, someone somewhere will, will laugh. The thing is though with that is I've bought quite a few models that cost an absolute fortune. The Warlord Titan was £1,200, you buy a car for that. Um, you know, Stormbird was 750 so already that just, just on two models, that's £2,000. Not including the Mastodon or the Porphyrion or all of the new releases. So £2,000 on two models, um, that £2,000, put it this way, could have gone half to finishing the chapter. I would have half finished the chapter with £2,000. I think I worked it out it was about four or £5,000 to finish it um, completely. That's by all the plastic models I, I need um, and actually a few, um, few Forge World models too. But when things like that happen, it does set you back and all the new releases. I want to buy all the new releases um, for my faction uh, or my, my armies uh, that I can. And I want to bring you those videos and I want to make them so that you, you know, I can review them and, and I've got something to show you as well. Uh, so that's my biggest goal is to, is to finish the chapter. Build, build wise. Yeah, I'd love to paint it. Will I ever paint it in my lifetime? Probably not uh, because I'd have to sit down and paint a unit, so a squad of 10 marines every single week. But it's not just that, it's the tanks, it's the dreadnoughts, it's the special characters. Special characters you could spend, I spend a, a week or two doing. And this is not a week of me sat there for eight hours a day for a week. This is, you know, full-time job, six days a week, things like that, uh, you know, motorbiking, YouTube. Obviously making the videos takes a, a long time too. The Warlord was my main hobby goal for quite a while, but the, but finishing the chapter build wise um, and I break it up into companies and there will be videos on each separate company as time goes on um, once they are complete build wise once they're complete I'll do a, a video so they're the uh, wargaming hobby goals Elstonation what a legend 
next he asks um, if you could have a game of anything against any youtuber who would it be and what game oh good question my friend a game I'd like to do is an apocalyptic game with um, Templar's Crusade he no longer he's no longer with us no he's he no longer um, does any YouTube videos I don't think um, but he was one of my main inspirations of um, putting Warhammer 40,000 on my channel. I think I watched them for a year or two um, and then finally bit the bullet and, and got back into uh, Warhammer. And I'd like an apocalyptic battle with him, using my Warlord, my Reaver, um, Warhounds, you know, all, all the big sort of toys. Uh, the Stormbird, would, I'd love to use that in a game. So someone with, a, with an appreciation of apoc apocalyptic um, sized armies uh, on, on a huge board or, or a couple of mats or hall even and um, that's the type of game that I'd like yes it would probably last all day or a couple of days uh, but that would just be epic and we'd have some special characters in there and all the rest of it I'd like a game of Blood Bowl with um, Wargaming Viking definitely that would require me to buy Blood Bowl and get a load of, get a team together and all the rest of it because I think that would be great fun sitting down a few beers with him sorry a few waters with him and uh, you know having a few few uh, matches that would be fantastic uh, Parker one two three four nine five uh, asks when are you doing an army showcase it's soon Parker thank you for your patience I I do appreciate it I've been working on the update video for. I want to say almost two years now it's it's pretty much you know every sort of waking moment i'm adding bits to it whether that's gluing new releases or um working on various projects what happens is, is i i paint a certain project and then i order a few models and then so that i can sort of build them after i've painted them as like a little reward but i end up sort of building them as i'm paint painting things and yeah, the pile increases, but to give you a real time update, I've started um, taking pictures of the army and, and bits of the forces on my Instagram um, as a little piece of information moving forward. It is coming, it is weeks away. You're not gonna have to wait any more than a month. So I hope that fills you with hype. <laughs> um, it is enormous. It fills pretty much an entire room. It's well over 50,000 points now, and it's well over sort of 15,000 pounds worth of, of, uh, of little plastic soldiers, no, of, of miniatures. It got to a stage where I thought, this is enough. I don't need any more. Paint what you've got. <laughs> uh, but then I thought, well, if I do that, I'm just quitting. So I thought, no, you want to finish your chapter, so do it. I've got 30 normal Space Marines to glue, five Terminators, uh, five Sisters of Silence, five Custodians to glue, uh, a Land Raider. Um, this is a little bit different than normal Land Raider, put it that way. Three Jet Bikes to uh, glue and spray. A little bit of the scenery from the Shadow War um, to finish, ready for the review. And a couple of other things I want to touch up and just improve slightly. So if you could, <laughs> if you could uh, attribute a time of how long that's going to take me to do, then we are weeks away. Um, so I hope that helps, but I do really do appreciate your patience. It will definitely be worth the wait. The Solo Wargaming Show asks, um, I think I saw on your page where you collect knives. Have you ever been in the military or studied martial arts? I have studied martial arts. You are correct. Warp brushes is not really a question, but it's quite funny. I have a reaver in its box, my summer project, not making me excited for it, haha. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I, spent, I spent three months on mine and um, that was through the summer and it was hot, um, but I did it and um, it was worth it. And you know you've you've got something there you, that that is one of the, one of the hardest models it, that I think is one of the hardest models and um, requires a lot of patience, um, a fair bit of planning, and um, pinning. If you like pinning, you can do some pinning. Um, magnetization, yeah. Hurry up, Forge World, and release the the different carapace weapons. Me and uh, Warp Brushes want to 
want turbo lasers on on the top and not the not the apocalyptic missile launcher not that it's bad but toby ward uh says that he's given up uh, buying games workshop due to its pricing it's become all too expensive toby there's a company called forge world go on their website i don't want it to upset you but if you thought gw was expensive try try five plastic slash resin models for 51 pounds just try that my friend um forge world are ridiculously expensive too um he asks do you ever build from scratch what is your view to 3d printing of certain things um yeah go for it if you've got the money to splash out on a 3d printer go for it you know it's your 3d printer print what you like i doubt it'll ever be up to the same sort of quality as as things that you buy from games workshop or forge world but hey you know they charge you for the rules so if you were to um you know print a couple of squads of space marines and a you know special character and they looked okay and you wanted to uh, use them in a game with your mate that's fine you know i don't see any issues with that because you're probably buying the rules probably um you're probably buying their paints and you're probably having a good time and that's 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 what it's down to at the end of the day for certain things go for it Dominic Gibson asks, what do you think of the Inquisitor Marta Alpha game? I think it looks great. I'm not sure that Inquisitors should be made to shave off their eyebrows because I think it's incredibly important. Eyebrows are important. Hashtag save the eyebrows. Because if you're if you're an Inquisitor, you, you probably are running after um, bad guys a lot of the time. Unless you sort of give Gideon, spoiler alert, Gideon Ravenna, and then you're just sort of, sort of floating about. But still, you get my point. Um... Yeah, it looks great, the, the sort of cinematics and things, and it's got great potential. Dawn of War 3 had great potential too. That still might turn out good, who knows. Manta D3, regular on the channel. I'm trying to start Horus Heresy Arm, A Thousand Sons. What books do I need? I already replied to him because I'm an idiot. Uh, if you can afford it, recommend the Inferno and the Crusades book. So yeah, the, the darkness of the Army Darkness, Army List sort of book and the Inferno book, um, definitely. But you know, that's going to set you back £110 for two books, uh, but you'll have everything you need in there. Um, okay, Elliot F35, last question. I asked in a giveaway video, how would you price all of the models in Games Workshop and Forge World if you could? There's a lot of models, Elliot, I'm afraid. You know, there, there's hundreds and hundreds of models. I, I haven't got the time to go through every single model, um, but some of the key models... Games Workshop and Forge World. Uh, pricing is is such a sort of I say hot topic, and people are sensitive or insensitive to it. Um, people can be insensitive to it in terms of you know if you can't afford it, why are you doing the hobby? Uh, people can be sensitive to it as why are single single characters you know thirty pound or twenty five pound, and why are a Primark's almost sort of seventy pounds um, from Forge World, you know. E even people sensitive to sort of like the Warlord Titan, which is the biggest, most expensive model they do. Um, it's one thousand two hundred and forty pounds, and people instantly think it's over a thousand pound for a model. Yeah, but it represents sort of zero point zero three percent of the range. It's not like they they only make ten models, and one of those ten models is the Warlord Titan. They make hundreds and hundreds of models. Um, I think Forge World is expensive um, on the whole. I think the paints are expensive, the brushes are overpriced, the tools are overpriced. I'll, I'll be doing a video about brushes uh, at some point. Uh, Model-wise, I think they're now at that stage where £30 for sort of, you know, five Custodian Guard or whatnot is is getting quite expensive 30 pounds for you know it is two sprues of, of models for five models um that aren't really sort of multi-pose as as such so, well i say that they're as multi-pose as space marines maybe but they don't rotate as much on their torso so and then character models are expensive you know 25 pound or so for plastic miniatures for a single plastic miniature it's it's borderline sort of Forge World. I saw that um, Forge World custodian, the guy that sort of 
sat on the loo or well he's not he's, he's you know he just sat down with his helmet off taking a, a rest we all know custodian guards don't take rests um but this one is uh in in the pose that they, they've made him into i think he's like 45 pound just for a just for a single miniature on a on a normal base 45 pounds and he's like an event only model and i do think that sometimes they their pricing is off i really do i don't like how they increase their prices year on year um yeah they, they do decrease a couple of things um but you've really got to look at the whole range for that i don't like how with forge world sort of a third of everything that you buy um has some kind of fault or air bubbles or slippage or you know issues uh with it bubbling the delivery pricing is an absolute joke You've, you've just opened, you know, for me, when you said talk about the pricing, you've opened up the the door of, of um, pricing rant for me, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the shipping pricing is an absolute joke. Um, you know, you, I bought the, the three jet bikes uh, and something else. And I think shipping was like £14 or something. £14. Yeah, so I, th I think... It's the delivery, I think. The prices, some models are overpriced, some aren't. But then to add the, the percentage for the delivery on top. I think if things were delivered to Games Workshop stores, that would encourage more people to go to Games Workshop stores and pick their models that they've ordered from Forge World up. And also, while they're in there, guess what? Because they're saved on shipping, they'll probably buy a can of spray or some paint or this month's White Dwarf. Uh, it, it, it's a no-brainer for me. The, the only sort of logistic side of thing things is, is they already do ship, you know, from Games Workshop to the stores, you know, from Nottingham to the stores or, or different depots. They already do that. It's just the timing. Like, how long would you be willing to wait for your model to get to your Games Workshop store? Um, and the, the logistics behind whether that could that model could be packaged with the normal Games Workshop models and sent to that store in the normal time frame and then you, you're looking at the storage space has that brick and mortar store got the storage space to store and um, you know your uh warlord tie-in which is two big boxes and then the boxes for the weapons and that's just one order but you get free shipping with that anyway so and you probably would want it to be sent by ups and um, you know express shipping but still we get where i'm coming from that's a question that that they have to ask themselves but i think they get, they're gonna have to do something soon about it it's the fact that the models are expensive and then you've got to factor in all the the shipping costs um on top of that games workshop just themselves have solved that problem because over i think 30 or 40 pounds i think it's um 40 pounds uh, over that price point they then ship for free however the sprays aren't shipping for free but that's anywhere you go you have to pay um, because Royal Mail just don't, they, I don't know why they used to, but Royal Mail just don't handle the, the spray cans at all. So that's why they have to use couriers and things like that. Anyway, I hope that sort of answered your question about the pricing. Um, if there are any particular models anyone wants me to talk about, rant about, regarding the price, put it in the comments below, as always. Uh, thank you ever so much for joining me for this huge video. Long time coming. Really look forward to uh, next couple of months. Obviously I've got this and there's quite a few big things coming to the channel. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.